Marshall will start the proceedings at this point with the, the host team, the host coach, uh, the home accommodator here, uh, the hometown boy is Dr. California coach Darren Arbet. You can just give a, a brief opening statement, just uh, you know, sort of encompassing your season, getting back to this point, and what you're looking forward to on Saturday, please. First of all, I want to say that I'm proud of my team because from day one they bought into the program and uh, I'm old school and then they took it over. That, that was the best thing about it. I didn't have to say much. They policed each other all season. They took care of each other. They competed hard against each other. They took care of their bodies and they did a tremendous job getting to this point. And that was our focus all year was to get to this game and have an opportunity to win the championship. And uh, I just want to congratulate them because they bought into it all year. Now the visiting coach, Coach Les Moss of the Jacksonville Sharks, who was the last coach to defeat the Arizona Rattlers in the Arena Bowl just a few seasons ago. And now Coach Moss returns for another opportunity, potentially his second Arena Bowl championship. Thank you. Uh, I'd also uh, like to congratulate uh, my team. This has really been a, a challenging year. Uh, we've gone through a lot of adversity together, and it started you guys have no idea, but it started on the first day of training camp when we went out uh, to our field and we had to combat Mother Nature through uh, two weeks of, it was tough. That was our first adversity and then starting off the season like we did 0-4 when we knew we had the, uh, a talented team and a talented roster, but they, uh, they knew they were going to get it together and uh, they kept working and they kept looking forward and um, once we, we played San Jose, and they beat us that fourth game, and we could see it starting to turn there. And uh, I knew that we had a chance at that point. And ever since then, they've just uh, kept on keeping on. Obviously, uh, I was injured, and you know, Coach Ferguson and Coach White and Josh and the trainers and the players really just stepped up and came together and did exactly everything that they had to do to uh, fight. And I, I just. I, this, I've been around a lot of great teams uh, throughout my career in the Arena Football League and the character and the, uh, the intestinal fortitude that this team has is incredible. And it's been a, a lot of fun and a lot of ups and a lot of downs. And, but we're here and uh, we're proud to be here. And you know, congratulations to Coach Arbet and a great San Jose Saber Cat team. And uh, we're hoping for a great game tomorrow night. Thank you, coaches. And now, any media members uh, towards the back or who may be seated, just raise your hands. We have Frank over here on the side who can bring the microphone over to you so you can address any questions to the, the coaches and players up front. And I'll actually start off with the first question, but please feel free to raise your hand and Frank will bring a, a microphone over to you. But uh, Coach Moss shared uh, an interesting story with us at one point during the season headed into one of the national broadcasts. Just the difference for you in coaching from upstairs, from the booth area, and you and Jake Rudin had been through that, being on the headsets at, at one point before, and how uh, that was a, a bit of an uncomfortable situation with you and Coach Rudin at one point. Can you maybe share a bit of that story? Well, we, we never really had used headsets, and, and we wanted to see what it was like. You know, uh, Jay was always on the field, but, uh, you know, I would, I would call the fronts or the coverages or, or, or vice versa. So we wanted to see what the communication was going to be like, and it lasted a game or two. It didn't last very long at all because we we were driving each other crazy. I mean, the things that were coming out of my mouth, and, and I know, you know, that I drive my assistant coaches crazy because I just spout out stuff. And uh, but yeah, we couldn't handle it. I mean, Jay and I couldn't handle it, and we really didn't need it because we were both on the sidelines. But uh, obviously, with me being up there. You have to have communication, and thank goodness that I have some patient assistant coaches because uh, <laughs> things come out of my mouth, and it's uh, wow. But uh, thanks a lot, guys, for putting up with it. <laughs> uh, this is for both coaches. Let's start with uh, Coach Arbet. You've had so much success in this league, but it's, it's been a few years by Sabercat standards to get back to the Arena Bowl. How do you think you've changed as a coach heading into the Arena Bowl on Saturday? 
know, it's hard to get to this game, but it's not about me. It's about the coaches, the players, our support staff, Jeff Jarnigan, Terry Malley, Omar Smith, Coach Walker, Coach Marshall, uh, Jesse, our trainer, Chris, Lamar, my son, equipment guy, Daniel Frazier, player personnel, and all the players. And I said it earlier, they bought into the system and I would just go out there and watch them practice, but they were policing each other, they were competing, and they had it on their mind. And then Coach Moss, you've been a part of this league virtually since day one. You've been a part of championships going back all the way to the early 90s. Your family's been a part of this league. We saw the emotion when you guys won the American Conference. You've been a part of it so long. How do you feel that the game has affected you and what role it's had in your life as a coach? Well, it's, you know, I mean, obviously I was raised by a coach, so that's something that I wanted to do at a very young age, and, and this league afforded me to do that. And uh, I was very fortunate to uh, be able to work with my dad. Uh, he brought me up in this league and taught me how to be a coach and uh, got me to this point. So that was a blessing. It was really a blessing being able to work with him. For 10 years we worked together, and it's uh, – that's a little tough working for your dad as an assistant coach because he's, uh, you know, he, he kind of gets on you a little bit more and expects more, you know, the father-son thing. And I had to learn as fast as I could that, you know, he was just teaching. That's all he was doing. And I had to separate my son-father feelings away from, you know, him being him because he was old school. You know, he worked for George Hallis. And, played for Curly Lambeau and uh, so he played for some very old school guys <laughs> so uh, but it was uh, it was really a blessing and uh, he taught me some great lessons and he's still teaching and uh, you know these guys have really bought into everything that we set up and you know again coach uh, Ferguson and coach White have done a great job and Josh our trainer is not only with the players but with me has <laughs> helped out tremendously and Terrence and Tommy have done a great job with the offense and the defense, and, uh, and you know I just uh, couldn't be more proud of them. And you know you don't stop learning as a coach ever. You know, and each team is different. And uh, you know to get to this point, 18 game season plus the playoffs and everything, it takes a lot to get to this game. Uh, both teams, everybody's been through a lot, so uh, it's an honor to be here. One thing, especially uh, for Sabercats fans, Eric Meyer, uh, Sabercats quarterback, and a lot of folks who are tuning in online. For you, Eric, with the transition you made being here your first year in San Jose and working with Coach Malley, not just the system, but you know some things for you that, that you honed in on and, and the way your game had a certain flair to it that it was known for over the years, it's still there. It seems like some adjustments got made this season. Yeah, um, working for, uh, for uh, Coach Malley and Coach uh, Omar, um, came to the season and uh, you know, I definitely want to be uh, held accountable and uh, you know they both did a good job as far as you know uh, focus on fundamentals and just, uh, just the little details uh, as far as quarterback and as far as the offense goes and that was a uh, big thing that they, they did all year it was uh, a lot of detail and uh, you know I'm just excited that I had a chance and opportunity to, to play for both of them. Uh, Tommy Grady Sharks quarterback one of the things we touch on throughout some of the national television broadcasts is you being kind of the rare breed that's left as a quarterback calling his own plays during the games. Can you share just what that process is like for you where you get beat up throughout a contest and you have to keep the intensity at a certain level, of course, but still be able to think the game at a high level as you're kind of trying to execute a game plan that you're implementing? Yeah, um, you know, the last couple of years I've been calling my own plays and, uh, you know, obviously I have a lot of help from the coaching staffs and, uh, you know, the receivers and other teammates, but, uh, you know, uh, I get a lot of help in the game from Tiger. One of the receivers wants, wants, to play, wants to play for themselves, they'll call it. So, uh, but uh, you know, we, we do a good job uh, preparing for teams and coming up with good game plans and just, uh, you know, trying to execute those game plans. We're playing a great defense this week, so uh, you know, we got we to be ready to go. Terrence Smith in that, that shark secondary, there's a, there seems to be a certain attitude that's, that's come about between the pass rush up front and the way that you guys operate on the back end. Can you describe the way that, that the different levels of your defense have made you guys, especially after a slow start during the season, how that's helped you guys get to this point? 
Uh, just, you know, most importantly, giving our offense uh, opportunities to make plays. So, you know, as many stops as we can get, that's what we, you know, what we shoot for. David, this question is for you. Your guys' defense, unprecedented success in the AFL. This used to be a league where you counted on the offense to score on every possession. That's no longer the case in the modern AFL. Talk about the mentality of your defense and how you guys came together to, to allow less than 37 points per game. Uh, well, it seemed like at this point of the year last year we were in a uh, we were in a uh, our banquet, and uh, we kind of had a bitter taste in our mouth following that, uh, our championship game uh, with the Arizona Rattlers, and we we set an expectation on ourselves to come back and just build off of what we had started last year, and uh, the core group came back and. We just work really well. Coach uh, Cedric Walker's done an awesome job with our defense, just putting us in the right place at the right times. And I mean, I, I got seven or eight other guys around me that um, have really bought into to just selling out, and the expectations have been so high. Um, we're just going out and playing as hard as we can.